Hi and welcome to this edition of Mobile Tech Videos. I'm Josh, also known as Connection 2005 on the XTA Developers Forum. Today we'll be talking about how to give your Samsung Captivate a high resolution uh, look and feel. Here we have a standard Captivate with the stock LCD density and we're going to be talking about creating a high resolution look and feel for this phone uh, which of course would make uh, the screen have more real estate items would be smaller and we'd be able to see more of what's already there so without further ado we'll get stepped into uh, to doing this the first thing we need to do is pull the build.prop file from the phone to the computer uh, before we go any further we're talking about using SDK tools and a rooted device if you're not rooted and you don't understand how to use SDK tools at this time you need to watch how to root your phone video and SDK tools video which are available on my channel so once you've done that we can go ahead and proceed make sure the phone is in USB debugging mode so to do that we'll click settings the settings option applications development and we've now verified that we are in USB debugging mode. Go ahead and plug the phone in. And we'll set it aside. On the PC, we need to open a command prompt. And we're going to change directories to where we have our adb.exe file. For us, it's under Android SDK Windows slash tools. And we're going to type in adb pool forward slash system forward slash build dot prop and then we're going to type it, we're going to add a space and type in where we want that to go so for us we're going to put it on the desktop so there is a look at what we've got going on there there we go and I'm going to press enter okay we saw the transfer complete and here is the build.prop file that we created. I forgot the D, so let me go ahead and put the D on there. There's the build.prop file. So now what we want to do is we want to make our changes for LCD density. So open this up with Notepad, which is native to Windows, and search for the line that says LCD density. So we know it's 240, so there it is right there. There's the 240. It's a little confusing to read because it's not on a phone, but there's the 240. So now, let me zoom in on that. What we want to do here is change the 240 to 200. The smaller the number, the smaller the screen uh, displays the icons. The larger the number, the bigger everything is. So, we've changed it to 200. We're going to do a file save as, and we're going to call this build1.prop. So as you can see there, we've named it build1.prop. Okay. Let me get everything centered up. So save that to the desktop. The reason for this is now we have the original build.prop, and now we have our modified version, which is what we're going to need. So once you've done all that, go ahead and uh, take your time, follow those steps, and we'll go to the next step once you've gotten caught up. Okay, once you've edited your build.prop file and saved it as build1.prop to the desktop right alongside the original build.prop, we want to make sure the phone's still plugged in, and we want to push the new build1.prop to the root of the SD card. So we'll type in adb push, the location that we've saved to, space, forward slash, SD card, forward slash build dot prop so we're going to drop the one and call it build dot prop press enter you'll see that it's copied let me get a little closer for the code here so we can see that we did an adb push from the directory that it was at to the new directory on the sd card so you can see how we did that there okay set the phone back down the camera back down on the phone side, we'll go into My Files to verify that the, the file correctly got pushed. And there it is, build.prop. Can't open it on the phone unless you have Root Explorer, but My Files shows build.prop, which is great. Before we do this, we want to note the change that we're going to undertake. As you can see, we've got six icons on the dock. 
it takes up all the space on the dock and we can see about if we go to the top one two three four five five rows is what we can see in there and we'll use another application like text messaging to show that we can see one two three four five six about six threads we can see six threads top to bottom so that's six dock icons about five rows of apps in the uh, app drawer and six text messaging threads and we're going to note that for now so we can compare to our new value okay so now that we've pushed the file to the root of the SD card we need to mount read write access to the system directory so I'm going to pull this code up over here and my command line on the right and now I'm going to type in ADB in the command line we're going to type in ADB shell press enter you'll get a dollar sign now turn the phone on unlock it keep it at the home screen and type in SU press enter if you've never done that before you'll get a super user request say allow if you have you'll be like me and you'll have a pound sign which represents super user command prompt now we can type in our command mount space dash o space remount comma rw space forward slash dev forward slash block forward slash stl6 space forward slash system press enter it will repeat the command and give you a command uh, a new command prompt like that okay now we'll set it back down and what we want to do is run the copy command Let's see here. We're going to run the copy command. So it would be cp forward slash sd card forward slash build dot prop space to the new directory we're going to, which is forward slash system forward slash uh, build dot prop. Okay, we're going to set this up. I want to highlight this for a second and show you that the cp command also requires busybox to be installed. If you've never installed BusyBox, you need to do that. You can go to the market, type in BusyBox Installer, download the app, and install it. I'll make a video for that later uh, and explain what BusyBox does. But for now, that's the command we're going to run. Most of if you're rooted, you've already got BusyBox installed. But So we've got the CP for copy, the location of the file that we're going to move, and then the new location that we want the file to be at. And we're going to press Enter. Okay, we pressed Enter and gotten a pound sign. Now we want to reboot our phone. So I'm going to go ahead and allow you guys to catch up. We're going to reboot the phone and note the changes. Okay, now that we've rebooted the phone, right off the bat we see that the screen size, the, the display text is already smaller. That's great. That's the effect we wanted. So we're going to open and it's pretty significant. We've got an entire space extra down here in the dock that we can add to. Um, everything on the screen is much smaller more high resolution pretty much is what the correct definition is um, we can see more calendar events uh, if we go into our app drawer we can see one two three four five six almost six and a half now whereas we used to just have five so we can see way more apps per screen there uh, if we go into our text messaging we can see a lot more threads. Uh, looks like about one and a half to two threads advantage. So in the end you're getting a lot more real estate and it's the whole definition of high resolution. The reason high resolution exists is for more real estate. You can put more things on a single screen than you could have before. You can see more things on a single screen. Um, another big one is, is actually uh, is web. Um, when you load a web page, you'll notice that you can see much more of the screen. I found this to be significant when viewing pages in a classic mode versus mobile. When you view something in classic mode, it treats it much more like a desktop and you get a lot more resolution. It is important to note that some of these applications don't quite play correctly with this. Some applications are designed to open and fit to the current resolution, where some are designed to fit to a static resolution, not change, such as the phone. So you see the phone, the top is outlined correctly, but the phone pad actually isn't, because it's looking for the 240 density that we changed from. So it's important to note that this is a developmental change, and something for you just to play with, not really for you to expect it to work absolutely perfectly. You can mix and match your apps and get like a different dialer, and it would actually show up the whole screen, so you can make it work perfect. It would just take a little bit of finesse. But that's how to give your Samsung Captivate a high resolution look and feel using the build.prop editing change. 
For more information on this, please see the more info links. Feel free to check out our videos that we have on the channel. Please visit mobiletechvideos.com. And uh, as always, good luck.